Hello, this is the Provoke Prawn, and this is the Corsair Virtuoso XT, also known as the Corsair Virtuoso RGB Wireless XT, which is a bit of a mouthful, but this is the flagship gaming headset from Corsair, an addition to the Virtuoso lineup, and a fantastic looking headset. Now this is an unboxing and review video where I'm going to be talking to you about the various features of the Virtuoso, and for reference I reviewed the original Virtuoso, the standard model, about a year or so ago and so I'll link to that video in the description but they've updated this headset with a number of nice new features one of which is this broadcast microphone similar to that that you got on the Virtuoso SE I'm using the microphone now for the voiceover for this video so you'll get an idea of what it's like all the way through and I'm going to do a bit more on the mic later on to show you wireless and wired modes and other things as well so stick with me for that now, the Virtuoso RGB Wireless XT has a number of nice new features to it. It also has some exciting features as well, thanks to being multi-compatible with a number of different devices. They say it will work with PC, Mac, PlayStation 5, PlayStation 4, and a lot more besides. You can also use it with Xbox One, Nintendo Switch, and any device that will have a 3.5mm connection. That's right, this thing has multiple connection options. It has wireless with slipstream wireless dongle you'll see in a minute. You can use it in USB-C connections. I'll show you that later on. 3.5mm connection and most importantly it also has Bluetooth now. So the Virtuoso Wireless XT has Bluetooth with Qualcomm's Aptex HD technology which means you can get 24-bit audio, high-res audio on your phone via something like Tidal so you can stream with Tidal and I'll show you that later so you can get really good quality music with this headset as well as high-res audio if you're using it on PC now I have been using this headset on PC in wired and wireless modes and with a 3.5mm connection more on that a little bit later on but that is where you'll get the best experience so plug it in with the USB-C cable that's included in the box and you can get 96kHz 24-bit high-res audio when gaming which is a really good quality sound gives you a wide range of sound and a fantastic overall audio experience now in the box you get the headset itself this carry case which you can store it in obviously and then all the different accessories and there are a number of things included in the box that allow you to connect to uh, different devices but the most interesting for me is the ability to have both wireless and Bluetooth connections or wired and Bluetooth connections as well so you have a dual connectivity option on this that allows you to connect to two devices at once which is something that I've seen with the Steel Series, Arctis Pro Wireless and a number of other headsets but it's very limited to flagship headsets for the most part. You'll see you also get a number of different cables. The detachable microphone that I'm using at the moment so you don't have to use this microphone which is a nice thing because you can obviously take it off and use the headset as headphones if you want to. A USB-C to USB-A cable, it's braided, and the Slipstream wireless dongle, which is said to deliver 24-bit, 48 kilohertz audio over Slipstream wireless. And it also has a 60-foot range. That is the best wireless connection if you're going to be using it, but you actually get a better quality of audio when it's plugged in. And that's one of the odd oddities about this headset is that it's wireless but you get better quality sound when plugged in. So you have the choice to choose between those things. The microphone, as you can see, is quite a nice looking microphone. And as you can hear, one of the best microphones on a gaming headset. That was the case in the original Virtuoso and it's carried through here with the XT. You get a 3.5mm cable included in the box that has a volume wheel and mic mute button on it. So you can see that you can connect it to a number of different devices with this as well. Anything that has a 3.5mm connection you can use that and then obviously you can mute the microphone and use the mic that way as well. I have actually been using this plugged into my GoXLR to monitor my usual microphone setup when playing on PC. And I'll talk a bit more about that later on. Then there's the USB-C and USB-A cable connects to your PC and then into the headset. I can confirm that USB-C to USB-C will also work and I'll talk about that and show you that later as well. And then the Slipstream wireless dongle which gives you a really straightforward and simple connection to the PC very quickly. 
A very nice looking headset as you can see. It's machined with wonderful metals and a really good look and finish to it. It has some nice padding on the headband and most importantly the headband is also very flexible. You'll note there's a lot of tilt and twist and turn in the ear cups and so it will sit really nicely on the head and can be adjusted into a great position to give you a good clamping force. So it has quite a good clamping force on it and I'll show you that later on in the video as well but it sits nicely and adjusts into a position where it sits over the ears and stays there during gaming sessions and that's been good for certainly blocking out external noise and sitting over the ear well too. You'll see there's an extendable headband but it also stretches out quite far so I feel like it would fit on a number of different heads and you shouldn't have a problem with that. They've also included these plush memory foam cushioned ear cups in there as well and they're designed to deliver a comfortable experience however I have unfortunately found them uncomfortable and I'll talk about that a bit later when I show you a bit more close-ups of those ear cups so stick with me for more on that. Another highlight to the Virtuoso XT is the inclusion of Dolby Atmos spatial surround sound. So the headset offers virtual surround sound using Dolby Atmos. When you're on PC, if you plug the headset in, install IQ and then Dolby Access, which is an app you can get from Microsoft Store, you then automatically get Dolby Atmos for free because it's included with the Virtuoso headset so you can then make the most of Dolby Atmos spatial surround sound within Windows and get fantastic positional audio that way and actually positional audio has been really good for that reason and it's been nice to use. So with the original Virtuoso there was 7.1 surround sound through IQ now it's controlled via Dolby Atmos. A close-up look at the ear cups and the outside of the headset and you'll see this wonderful aluminium etched design a really nice looking headset and I think the fact that you can remove the microphone and then you can use it with Bluetooth obviously and if you want to you can use the mic for calls on Bluetooth gives you plenty of flexibility in terms of how to use the headset whether you're using its headphones whether that's just around the house or if you want to go out of the house too it doesn't look too gamerish it's kind of a high quality style headset with a nice look and feel to it and i think the overall sort of vibe of the headset is certainly nice you'll see all the different connection options and other things on here too with these shots so the ability to plug in the 3.5 mil connection for example and to adjust the audio one of the interesting points on it is that you can adjust the audio of the headset and the bluetooth volume separately and i'll talk about that in a little while there is a very nice vibe coming from this thing you'll see a premium design headband that looks like it will be resilient over time and should last. It feels very solid in the hand, it certainly feels a very premium build quality and looks like it will keep going for a long time. A close-up look at the ear cups and you can see the Corsair logo on the side. On that side you can actually adjust the RGB lighting on there. It's not too garish, it's literally just the logos lit up and you can adjust the brightness of that within Corsair's IQ software and change the lighting on it. Another shot here just to demonstrate how much sort of turn and tilt there is in the ear cups. This is one of the nice features of the design. It will bend and turn and tilt until it's sitting on your head in a really comfortable position and a good angle. So it's really customizable and adjustable in that way, which makes it uh, wonderful. However, comfort is still a problem and it is those ear cups that are the issue. And I'll show you what I mean by that in a little while. Close up shots of it here and you'll see more about the connection. So for example, you'll note there are dedicated buttons specifically for the Bluetooth connection. You have a volume control, you have the connection button, and then above that you have the wireless and wired mode. It's interesting because that button that switches between wireless, wireless and wired is essentially an on-off button as well. So if it's not plugged in, you can flip it into the wired mode and that will essentially turn the headset off and save battery on that. I've noticed some issues when it's also connected to Bluetooth flicking between those two which can cause a disconnect and a bit of a problem there. 
where you can press that Bluetooth button and turn the Bluetooth mode on and then you can adjust the volume up and down separately with each of the sliders which means that you can have it connected to your phone for example with the Bluetooth and then wirelessly with a dongle on your PC and you can adjust the game audio for example with the volume control and then the music on your phone with the Bluetooth volume buttons. Now here I wanted to demonstrate that it is possible if you have one to plug in a USB-C to USB-C cable and connect to your phone that way. So if you don't want to use Bluetooth and you want to use it plugged in that is possible to do. So you can plug it in and then you can get into using music. Now I've got Spotify and Tidal on my phone but as I said this has the technology to run high res audio over Bluetooth. If you have Tidal or something like that, a service that has that high res audio then you can do it. So you can connect to the headset and then you can play back music. So you can play music through USB-C connection like this which obviously potentially has the benefit of charging the headset too if it has power output enough to do that but also it allows for a much bigger flexibility. And this isn't something they focus on, but you can obviously then connect via Bluetooth as well, which is a separate option that I'm gonna show you now. So in order to do that, just press and hold the Bluetooth button on the underside and then find the connection in your Bluetooth connections. One thing that I will note is that for some reason, I can't get it to automatically connect to the headset, which is a bit of a nag. If you turn the Bluetooth on, then you should be able to get an automatic connection, but you can't. But here you can see that HD audio with the Qualcomm. It's recognized by the phone. And so once it's connected that way, you can then use Tidal and get audio via Bluetooth. Also a little thing, of note there is that when I unplug the USB-C connection even though I was playing connected via Bluetooth for some reason it stopped playing and that's that sort of connection problem that I've had it's not automatically connecting it's not recognizing what's happening and it's just refused to connection so it drops out occasionally for illogical reasons it's not like disconnecting under normal use but it does when you're like switching sources and things this isn't an issue I've had with something like the SteelSeries Arctic Pro Wireless, which automatically connects to Bluetooth. If you've got Bluetooth turned on, it automatically pairs with your phone immediately, and it's really seamless, whereas this is a bit more fiddly. I do like the ability to adjust the Bluetooth volume separately from the standard volume, though, on the fly, and that's really easy to do, too. And the quality of it is certainly fantastic. Now, onto the microphone. As you already can hear, the microphone is a fantastic capture quality to it. It blocks out a fair amount of external noise and it's also very flexible and bendable so you can get it into a good position. On the end of it you'll note there's a mic mute button, you can tap that and turn the mic on and off and you'll get a little light around the end to let you know when it's on. So it goes green for example when it's on and red when it's off, there's a ring around that, you can see that on the end there. You can also press and hold the mic mute button to turn side tone on and off so you can hear your own voice within the microphone and you can adjust the levels of that with an IQ software too but it is pretty important because this sort of padded leather faux leather ear cups block out a lot of external noise which means sometimes you can't hear your own voice very well so using side tone means you don't end up shouting at your friends or at yourself when trying to hear what you're saying so that's certainly a bonus the microphone quality is undeniably good for a gaming headset it's one of the best that i've heard that was the same on the original virtuoso and it carries on here with the xt really fantastic capture quality it is a bit fiddly to plug in you'll notice there's a notch on where it plugs into the headset and on the mic itself this means that you can't accidentally plug it in the wrong way which is actually useful because it would be really easy to put this headset on back to front because the lettering to show you which way around it goes is on the inside on the arms so the fact that you have that is actually beneficial now talking about the wireless connection plug that into your pc and as i said you can get a good quality range on it. this headset has 50 mil drivers that go from 20,000 hertz to 40 thousand hertz in terms of frequency response but you can also get 24-bit 48 kilohertz audio resolution over slipstream wireless which gives you fantastic audio but plugging in that USB-C connection obviously is the best option that not only charges the headset but also delivers high res 96 kilohertz audio also you can do that and run 3.5 mil connection I've been running the 3.5 mil through my GoXLR so I was able to 
mic monitor my standard full blown microphone at the same time so it is possible to do something like that as well which makes this headset a double bonus if you have an external mic that you want to monitor so it has loads and loads of connection options and really is very flexible in that way which i think is certainly appealing it is a very expensive headset so you do get what you pay for and it's nice to have those options here you can see it's a bit more on the extendability of the headset and now I'm going to start talking to you about the comfort of it because the comfort is for me one of the biggest problems this headset compares to something like the Astro 50 in terms of price it's an expensive headset a premium headset and yet unfortunately fails to deliver in terms of comfort and it's a real shame because I was hoping with the XT that have improved over the original Virtuoso which for me just isn't comfortable now I have noted a number of people in the comments on their past videos saying they haven't had a problem with comfort which is obviously great but for me unfortunately the comfort is still an issue you'll see there are memory foam padded ear cushions and they do provide comfort they are nice but the problem with them is they aren't deep enough they aren't big enough you'll see the oval in design and they are possible to remove so you can twist them off and remove them so you could potentially swap them out but what you'll notice is there isn't very much padding on the driver itself and also because of the shape and size of them there just isn't enough depth or overall size to them so I've found that unfortunately the same problem I had with the original Virtuoso remains here in that the ear cups just aren't big enough and so they squash on the top and bottom of my ear and also they're not deep enough and so there's a pressure on the outside of my ear where the driver's pushing against my ear too and so after a few hours it just becomes very very uncomfortable it's not it feels like it's more comfortable than the original Virtuoso because I remember in a very short space of time I found it com uncomfortable now I can probably wear these all day but my ears will hurt after that period of time which is not something you want from your headset from your gaming headset this is of course going to vary depending on the shape and size of your ears and you might ha might not have a problem with it and I really hope that you don't because it is a very small thing but it is unfortunately the case for me and I think it's important to report on these now I have got hold of the Virtuoso SE which is the previous version I was under the impression that they had bigger ear cups now so I wanted to be able to compare these and I actually took the ear cups off and measured them and they're exactly the same size so they're not any deeper I think the main difference is they have a memory foam cushioning on them and they say that comfort is king and they have premium memory foam ear pads that conform to the shape of your head and the whole thing's designed to be lightweight so it doesn't put loads of pressure on your noggin and like, you can just game for hours unfortunately though it is lightweight and doesn't nag and turns on top of my head from the headband or even from the clamping force those ear cups just aren't big enough and aren't deep enough and it's overall just not comfortable enough which is a real real shame but you can see the there is certainly some plush memory foam in there if you push on it you see it responding to touch and the way it reacts to that and so certainly very nice so what you'll see so far is a mixed bag of a headset it is for the most part a very premium device with a really good quality very nice capture quality on the microphone fantastic sound for gaming and for music and for movies I've d enjoyed listening to it certainly when playing games I've had good experience with the positional audio thanks to Dolby Atmos and a, a nice rich sound to it too it's also nice and loud and really easy to adjust the volumes on the fly with the multiple controls on there and the option to plug in a multitude of devices also makes it very flexible which is certainly appealing has a really nice premium look to it I think one of the better looking headsets available it isn't over the top in terms of the gamer side of things so really subtle RGB lighting on the Corsair logo and nowhere else really apart from the light on the microphone you'll note there's a little light that flashes on the headset to let you know when the charge is on you can get up to 15 hours of battery life out of it 
But because you get the best experience when plugged in, you probably find that you're plugging in more than you're not. There is a difference between the audio when you go into Windows and set it onto 96 kilohertz. Make sure you're using that wired mode, get the best possible experience, and so you can just keep playing on it. And here you can see what it looks like on the head and the overall sort of view of it and how it sits. You will note, for example, that there is a good clamping force. It will not just fall off even if you're moving your head around. It stays on there nicely and the, that overall result is great. And so I've been using this headset in wired mode to record the voiceover for the whole time. I just wanted to demonstrate the differences between that and the wireless version. So I'm going to unplug it now and show you the quality of the capture there too. And now this is in wireless mode, as you can see, I'm free from wires and this is the capture quality in wireless mode. Fantastic capture quality still. And really good performance from the microphone. I'm going to quickly just demonstrate what you get in terms of typing. So I'm typing in the background. You might be able to hear a little bit of it being picked up. I've also got my PC running just next to me with the fans running on that as well. So you should hear a little bit of that, but it blocks out a fair amount of background noise. I'm typing quite aggressively <laughs> on my keyboard um, but it's still reducing a lot of that and it's overall pretty impressive. And so the final thing to demonstrate now is the different audio options. I've currently got the headset plugged in with the wireless adapter so when running IQ you can see both the headset and the adapter in here and you'll just get some information on on that and how it's connected whether it's for your playstation or multi-point and because it's slipstream it means you can connect more than one corsair device to one dongle i don't have multiple devices to be able to show you that at the moment we go into the virtuoso and you can see that you can change the lighting effects on the ear cups just the logo but you can choose between different effects where you can do the usual in terms of lighting links that connect it with other Corsair peripherals and then into the equalizer tab now you'll note that it says that the headset surround sound is currently being controlled by Windows and EQ process profiles are, are not available and that is because you can get Dolby Atmos as I said when you have Dolby Access installed so you'll see Dolby Access and it's going to quickly launch that you download this from the Microsoft Store and then you'll see that when you go into products it has Dolby Atmos for headphones and it's through the Virtuoso XT. So this app automatically recognises that we have this headset and the license is provided by Corsair and then you can change into performance mode and you can change between the various settings here, so the intelligent equaliser setting for game movies and music so although you don't have equalizer settings in iq with this turned on you can get it in dolby access and adjust the settings in there now you can go into your device sound properties you see i'm on the output section if i go to device properties you can see that you can turn this on and off obviously you have the option of windows sonic for headphones as well or you can just turn it off when you turn it off you then have access to eq presets within iq now i'll be honest i don't really like these i don't think they're great i've been using pure direct it's been pretty good the bass boost one is very weird and kind of reverby it goes up and down in sort of the audio quality of it and it's very odd and it's not very good i don't like it you can however you can however create your own and adjust the various different levels in there so you can tweak things but my personal preference is actually use dolby atmos because you get a better quality you also note that you can adjust the side tone levels in here so you can turn it up so you can hear more or less of yourself or turn it off entirely with audible cues so it's easy to do that as well you can check the battery life and you can also set it so that you get a notification of how much battery life there is down in the notification area so you can see that down here now and you'll see that with ease you can adjust when it goes to sleep so how long you've got there to save battery life too and the brightness of the rgb so if you're not bothered about that you can turn that down and other things makes life a lot easier to keep on top of it and to maintain battery life fairly straightforward not over the top in terms of the settings in iq 
but it does give you access to more things. Now quickly going to go into sound settings a bit more though because if you go into additional device properties you then get access to this and you can see that in wireless mode we have 24 bit 48 kilohertz studio quality as a selectable option that is very high res audio but it's not the highest you can get now i am in wireless mode at the moment so i'm just going to quickly switch over to wired now i am in wired mode it's worth noting that when you look at the outputs ignore everything else apart from course of virtual so you can see there are two you've got head headset earphone Corsair Virtuoso wireless gaming headset and then you have headset earphone USB the USB one is the one you want for this case and then we go into device properties and again still we've got Adobe Atmos additional device properties and then when we're on your advanced settings you can see that you can go from 48 kilohertz all the way up to 96 so you can get studio quality high res audio and you can set that and apply it there so click apply and yeah, then away. Nothing else changes apart from that high quality, but it's important to be able to adjust that and know that you can do that within Windows Sound settings. So when you switch in between them, you need to make sure that you select the wired mode. Obviously, put it on wired mode on the headset itself, and then you got that. And you have the same sort of setup on the microphone as well, wireless and USB. So important to note the differences between those two. And so there you have it. A fantastic gaming headset, expensive, with a number of nice highlights to it. Unfortunately for me, it doesn't knock my Astro 50 on, off the pedestal for being my favourite wireless gaming headset. It is really good. If you had small ears, I think it's probably going to be a fantastic choice. But personally, unfortunately, the comfort is just not there. This has been the Provoke Prawn. Hope you found this video entertaining. Have a great life. This has been the Provoke Prawn. Hope you found this video useful, interesting, hilarious, or otherwise. Take a look at these other videos that I think you might find interesting as well. And have a look at the description for links and other information you might find useful. Click that join button to see the benefits of being a member of my YouTube channel. And most importantly, have a great life.